I rise today to mourn the tragic death of 26-year-old humanitarian aid worker Kayla Jean Mueller of Prescott, Arizona, who had been held by ISIL terrorists in Syria since August of 2013. We and I am heartbroken for the Mueller family at the loss of their beautiful, beloved Kayla. The thoughts and prayers of the people of her home state of Arizona, our country, and the civilized world are with the Mueller family at this terrible hour. I want to take the time today to share a bit of Kayla's story. This wonderful young woman represented the best of us. She had a remarkable impact on the lives of so many people who never had the honor of meeting her, and her story will forever be an inspiration to us. Kayla attended high school at Tri-City College Prep in Prescott, Arizona, where she was recognized as a national young leader and received the President's Award for Academic Excellence in 2007, the Yavapai County Community Foundation Youth Philanthropist of the Year Award in 2005, and the Gold Presidential Volunteer Award in 2007 for her volunteer efforts with Youth Count, AmeriCorps, America's Promise, Open In for Troubled Youth, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and other organizations. After graduating from Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff in 2009, Kayla committed her life to helping people in need around the world, first in India, in Israel, in the Palestinian territories, and back home in Prescott, where she volunteered at an HIV AIDS clinic and a woman's, women's shelter. But it was the conflict in Syria that drew Kayla's greatest interest and again sparked her desire to help those in need. In a YouTube video she made in October 2011, as the Syrian civil war was just beginning, Kayla said, I am in solidarity with the Syrian people. I reject the brutality and the killing that the Syrian authorities are committing against the Syrian people because silence is participation in this crime. I declare my participation in the Syrian sit-in on YouTube. In December 2012, Kayla traveled to the Turkish-Syrian border, where she worked for months helping the thousands of Syrian refugees whose, life were torn, whose lives were torn apart by the humanitarian catastrophe created by Bashar Assad and the Syrian civil war. According to her family, Kayla found this work heartbreaking but compelling. She was extremely devoted to the people of Syria and their struggle. Kayla explained to her family her call to service this way. She said, I find God in the suffering eyes reflected in mine. If this is how you are revealed to me, this is how I will forever seek you. I will always seek God. Some people find God in church, some people find God in nature, some people find God in love. I find God in suffering. I've known for some time what my life's work is, using my hands as tools to relieve suffering. When Kayla traveled back home to visit her family in Arizona in May 2013, she spoke about her experiences at the Prescott Kiwanis Club, where her father was a member. After recalling helping a Syrian man whose wife had been murdered to reunite with a six-year-old relative he was desperately searching for after their refugee camp was bombed, Kayla said, this story is not rare in Syria. This is a reality for Syrians two and a half years on. When Syrians hear I'm an American, they ask, where is the world? All I can do is cry with them because I don't know. After spending time with the refugees, Kayla told the Kiwanis Club she was totally drawn in and that she, quote, can't do enough to help. She recalled stories of children being hurt by unexploded bombs, women forced into early marriages, elementary schools targeted for bombing by the Syrian regime, 
and people living in caves to escape the bombing. Kayla went on, she said, Syrians are dying by the thousands and they're fighting just to talk about the rights we have. For as long as I live, I will not let this suffering be normal. I will not let this be something we just accept. It's important to stop and realize what we have, why we have it and how privileged we are. And from that place, start caring and get a lot done. She described part of her work helping the Syrian children in the refugee camps, including drawing, painting, and playing with the children, many of whom were badly scarred physically and psychologically by the war. She said, we give and get joy from playing with these children, she said. Half the 1.5 million refugees the UN has registered are children. In the chaos of waking up in the middle of the night and being shelled, we're hearing of more children being separated from their families by accident. Asked by Kiwanis members what are recommendations for addressing the conflict, Kayla said, a no-fly zone over refugee camps would be number one. Kayla also believed that if the terrible reality of the conflict were better known to Americans, our nation would be more heavily engaged. The people of the United States would see that something needs to be done, she said. Today, the Mueller family released a letter written to them by Kayla in the spring of 2014. I wanted to read a bit of it to give a sense of this young woman, her deep faith in God, her profound love for her family, and her remarkable strength in the face of grave danger. She wrote, I remember mom always telling me that all in all, in the end, the only one you really have is God. I have come to a place in experience where in every sense of the word, I have surrendered myself to our creator because literally there was no one else. And by God and by your prayers, I have felt tenderly cradled in free fall. I have been shown in darkness light and have learned that even in prison, one can be free. I am grateful. I've come to see that there is good in every situation. Sometimes we just have to look for it. I pray each day that if nothing else, you have felt a certain closeness and surrender to God as well, and have form, formed a bond of love and support amongst one another. I miss you all as if it had been a decade of forced separation. Kayla closed with these words. The thought of your pain is the source of my own. Simultaneously, the hope of our reunion is the source of my strength. Please be patient. Give your, give your pain to God. I know you would want me to remain strong. That is exactly what I am doing. Do not fear for me. Continue to pray, as will I, and by God's will, we will be together soon. All my everything, Kayla. In a statement today, the Mueller family reflected on Kayla's life and their commitment to work every day to honor her legacy. Kayla was a compassionate and devoted, compassionate and devoted humanitarian. She dedicated the whole of her young life to helping those in need of freedom, justice, and peace. Kayla was drawn to help those displaced by the Syrian civil war. She first traveled to Turkey in December 2012 to provide humanitarian aid to Syrian refugees. She told us of the great joy she took in helping Syrian children and their families. We are so proud of the person Kayla was and the work that she did while she was here with us. <clears throat> She lived with purpose, and we will work every day to honor her legacy. Our hearts are breaking for our only daughter, but we will continue on in peace, dignity, and love for her. On behalf of the people of Arizona and the United States Congress, I want to express the deepest condolences to Kayla's parents, Marcia and Carl Mueller, her loving family and many friends, our thoughts and prayers are with you. 
Kayla devoted her young life to helping people in need around the world, to healing the sick and bringing light to some of the darkest and most desperate places on earth. She will never be forgotten.